We've done some difficult challenges so far on the channel, but today we're going to be attempting the most difficult one thus far. Now you might be saying, okay, come on Soph, you did Emerald with a Feebas. I know, but let me explain. The first part of the Feebash challenge was ridiculous since we start off with Splash until level 15. Yes, there were some insanely difficult trainers like Roxanne and Watson, but ultimately Flail having up to 200 power at low health and having access to TMs like Ice Beam, Double Team, and Surf made it manageable. Today, however, we're going to try and beat Pokemon Platinum with nothing but a Cricketot. Now a lot of people don't seem to know how bad Cricketot really is, so let me explain. Cricketon has a base stat total of 194, which, not including Wishiwashi that of course has its schooling ability to make it a monster, is the fifth worst base stat total out of all 900 Pokemon. It's worse than Caterpie, Weedle, Wurmple, Magikarp, Feebas, Pichu, Igglybuff, you name it. As if that isn't bad enough, Cricketot's move pool, or lack thereof, is where things start to get really rough. By level up in Gen 4, Cricketot learns Growl, Bide, and Bug Bite. Bide basically builds up for two turns by taking the amount of damage received and doubling it to hit the opposing Pokemon. Not a great start, huh? Well, get this. By TM or HM, Cricketot learns... nothing. Absolutely nothing. By tutoring, Cricketon can learn a few moves, and while doing research, I initially saw Mud Slap and said, oh, that could be great. It lowers the opposing Pokemon's accuracy every time it's used. But the move tutor for that move just so happens to be in the survival area, which isn't accessible until the postgame. Uproar is available around the 7th gym and could perhaps be okay for neutral type coverage, but that's about all we've got to work with. Brutal. If you guys have seen my challenge videos before, you know the rules. Very simply put, only Cricketot in battle aside from HM slaves and required double battles. No glitches, cheats, or exploits aside from changing our starter to a level 5 Cricketot. No items in battle aside from held items. And no connecting with other games for the sake of trading items or whatever else. Now, let's begin the challenge. Alright, so we're ready to start our Aw, oh, Jesus Barry, I literally took one step. Apparently Barry's gonna find me 10 million dollars if I'm late, and uh, you guys know me and punctuality, so uh, I'm gonna start a GoFundMe. Any help is greatly appreciated. I don't want to get murdered. Now let's check the PC for- are you kidding me? Alright, not having a potion in the PC for us in Crystal was one thing, but not having a potion and wasting our time with some nonsense? This is horse <laughs> On our way to the- oh! Ah! Damn it, Barry! We get our starter Pokemon, which is shown as a Turtwig on screen, yet has the cry of a Cricketot. I guess they didn't anticipate people being ultra elite super hackers. I chose the Turtwig slot so that Barry chooses Chimchar for an extra challenge. Immediately, Barry challenges us to battle, and I am not looking forward to this. Cricketot only has Growl and Bide. Bide's not an absolutely terrible move, but absorbing two attacks worth of damage by not being able to attack is not an amazing strategy. Nonetheless, Barry's Chimchar doesn't yet have a fire move, so thankfully we're able to take a couple of scratches and return big damage. He goes for Leer on his last turn, otherwise he probably would have taken us out, and we hit him back to eventually win the battle. Well, I was not expecting that. We get 69 experience for winning, <laughs> nice, and level up to level 6. Not a bad start. Now here's a demonstration of how bad Bide can be. This is a wild level 2 Bidoof that almost takes us out because we take two tackles every time before attacking. Yikes. Hey, there's our free potion! Sir, I love you. Please marry me. Please? We make it to Sand Gem Town at level 7 thanks to being able to heal at our house in Twinleaf between battles. At the professor's lab, we get to nickname our Cricketon, and I go for Delilah because, well, we all know Cricket tunes me more than cry, right? Alright, that, that was terrible. Just, just roll it. Unfortunately, we will not be able to hear that throughout the run since we can't evolve this thing, so I hope you enjoyed that. I know I did. On Route 202, we encounter our very first trainer battle, and dear lord, this was insane. The problem is that normally Bide actually has priority in battle so that you can absorb hits, but this trainer's Starly actually had quick attack so it outsped us before we could use Bide. Not only getting damage on us, but also causing Bide not to work if it didn't attack afterwards. Amazingly, we survive some massive damage on just 2 HP and our Bide attack takes out the level 5 Starly in just one hit. Oh my god, I was not expecting this type of epicness so soon in the challenge. The next trainer has a bulky level 5 Bidoof, and we also defeat it just barely on 2 HP again. We make it to Jubilife City, deliver Barry's parcel, and challenge some of the students to battle. 
The first one has a level 6 Starly and uses an X attack on it right away. We survived this battle by 2 HP yet again. What in the f*** is going on? Is this game glitched or something? The second trainer is much tougher than I anticipated because she uses a potion on her Bidoof, something which does not work out very well with our bide strategy that we're stuck with. We lose to her, but on our second attempt, we're able to chip down her Bidoof to the point where it doesn't actually activate the potion and then take her out with a final hit. One of the main problems that I'm noticing is that despite the fact that we have Growl, it would kind of be stupid to use it since it would also technically make our attacks less powerful by limiting the amount of damage that we take. It seems that we're able to manage everything just barely, but I'm really fretting a major challenge that we have up ahead. We get a Quick Claw from the woman in the Jubilife condominium, which I put on Cricketot since, I mean, it's the only half useful thing that we have to put on it right now. One of the bug catchers in here says, sometimes when they get stronger, Pokemon learn new moves. Heh, <laughs> no they don't. Stop lying to me. On Route 203, we run into Barry again who challenges us to battle. After his Starly spams Growl forever, which isn't going to affect us at all, we're able to eventually take it out after it starts using Quick Attack. However, we go into his Chimchar with low health, so it's able to take us out without us being able to use Bide even once. This is going to be tough, since we need to take a lot of damage from Starly in order to take it out. I decide to go north from Jubilife to grind. Along the way, I encounter a trainer who's not even a fisherman who just has a Magikarp. Instantly, the realization sets in, oh, f this thing has nothing but splash, and we have nothing but bide and growl. Neither of us can do damage against each other. I spend like 10 to 15 minutes waiting for this thing to use all 40 of its splash PP so it can struggle itself to death. This is strangely reminiscent of the Feebas run. Dear lord, that was rough. After defeating all the remaining accessible trainers and some extra wild Pokemon to get to level 13, I decide to rematch Barry. Our second attempt gets off to a pretty good start and it looks like we'll have about half health leading into the Chimchar, but his Starly gets a crit, and that means there's no way we have enough HP to deal damage with Bai to take out his Chimchar as well. Damn. I decide to grind up one more level to level 14 to see how much it helps. On our next attempt, the Starly gets a crit at a great time, allowing us to pay back the damage and make it to the Chimchar with great health. But then, his Chimchar just repeatedly uses Leer so I can't do any damage against it, then takes us out with two scratch attacks before we can counter. Oof. I finally decide to commit to the grind to level 16 where we'll be able to get Bug Bite. Bide will certainly come in handy in certain circumstances, but this is most assuredly not one of them. Since we have to receive damage in order to deal damage, the grinding process is incredibly slow. I mean brutally slow, with trips all the way back to the Pokemon Center being absolutely necessary after every two Pokemon we take down, since that's how much damage we have to take. After 45 minutes, we reach level 16, learn Bug Bite, and hope to god we can pull something off. The problem here is that both of Barry's Pokemon resist Bug Bite and his Starly of course spans Growl to lower our attack, but at least it's some consistent damage. Even after a Growl, we managed to take out the Starly in two Bug Bites. There we go, that's what I'm talking about. The Chimchar spams Leer as per usual, and we're able to chip down its HP until we get a crit at the end to take it out before it can end our life. Phew! Alright, that was getting scary, but Bug Bite came in clutch. We arrive in Orberg City, and this girl in the condominium is complaining that she doesn't understand the logic behind her friend nicknaming his Psyduck Yellow. Uh, maybe because it's f***ing yellow? Don't worry, my friend. I understand you. I find the gym leader Rourke in the mines and forcibly drag him back to the gym so that we can destroy him. Or get destroyed by him. This is yet to be determined. Now the Orberg gym is utterly terrifying for us being the rock type. We have no good moves against rock types and are weak to them. This is gonna be something else. The trainers in Rourke's gym aren't actually all that bad, surprisingly, although that could be definitely attributed to the fact that the last one's Onyx missed its rock throw, which could have done some serious damage. But we make it to Rourke himself with relative ease and prepare for our first gym battle. Rourke first sends out a level 12 Geodude, and our Bug Bite does not do a whole lot at all. He then uses Rock Throw, which does huge damage. We still should be able to manage it though, but then he gets a crit and takes us out swiftly. Alrighty then. Our second challenge goes much better as his Geodude actually misses the first rock throw so we get a free turn. After wearing him down, Rourke actually uses a potion on it but thankfully it misses a second rock throw so we can take him out. He then sends out his Onyx which also does big damage on us with rock throw but we wear him down and get a fortunate crit to bring him a little bit below half but Rourke also uses a potion on this thing and it's able to take us out. I was kind of wondering if Bide would be worth it here but since his Pokemon do so much damage to us it's likely not a good idea. Growl, though, could be the play. 
But obviously, we're going to need to do some grinding first, so I head to Route 207 to start some training in the grass. We reach level 20 and then level 21, which I'm hoping will be sufficient. No, Delilah, no Delilah whoop for you, alright? Just, just give it up. Thanks to another miss, we're able to take out the Geodude quite handily, and then I actually decide to try Bide here against the Onyx. After it hits two rock throws and does a ton of damage to us, we're actually able to take it out in one hit, which avoids the potion use by Rourke. Then he sends out his Kranidos, I go for Bug Bite, and it amazingly does over half. He goes for Headbutt, and I'm like, wait, that's not super effective. Could we possibly survive? But nope. That was a really close attempt. I grind up one more level in the wild to level 22 and cross my fingers for this attempt. This time around, his Geodude doesn't miss any of its rock throws, and then we die to a crit from the Onyx. Man, oh man, this is tough. I tried this battle so many times it's not even funny and lost time and time again, to the point that we even leveled up again basically just from facing Geodude repeatedly. On one run, we actually managed to get to the Kranidos again by using Bide against the Onyx. At Kranidos, our Quick Claw activates, so we hit it with a Bug Bite, we survive its headbutt, Rourke uses a potion on it so we get a free hit, it just barely doesn't take him out, and then he takes us out with a second headbutt. I actually screamed, no! And my girlfriend came rushing in to see if I was okay. Oops. Sorry, Miss Sof. At this point, I have two observations from battling Rourke. One, we're almost able to two-hit KO his Geodude, and second, his Onyx is still faster than us. Onyx actually has a 70 base speed stat, which is the same as Pokemon such as Luxray and Mega Swampert. I grind up one more level and hope that it's enough. Thankfully, we did get plus two stats in attack, so maybe that'll help us. This time, we actually can take the Geodude out in two hits, meaning we only get one hit and don't activate his potion. We use Bide on the Onyx, and then it uses Screech, which is still okay because it will lower our defense, and his Rock Throw does more on the second turn of Bide, still allowing us to KO it. Our Quick Claw activates on the Kranidos again, it uses Headbutt and takes us down to one singular HP, and then Rourke uses a potion, then we hit it again but can't quite take it out, and it uses Pursuit to take us out. Ah, that was so close. A few more attempts later and we get back to the Kranidos with the highest HP I think we've had yet. Feeling risky, I decide to change my strategy and go for Bide, hoping that we can survive two headbutts. We do, with 4 HP left, go for Bide, and it actually takes it out. Yes! We have finally, finally obtained our first gym badge. Now hold on, Game Freak, let me ask you a question. Why in the absolute f does nearly every game have to have a Rock-type gym leader near the start? Our next destination is the Eterna City Gym, and on the way we'll need Rock Smash, so I decide to get our first HM Slave, a trusty old Bidoof. I was gonna name him Woody because of his beaverness and all, but then I remembered that I can't forsake my Canadian roots. Wood, eh? It is. <laughs> God, what is wrong with me? We make it to fl Wait a minute. Alright, I haven't thoroughly played through a Gen 4 game in like a decade, but I always thought that this was Flomaroma Town. It's actually Floroma? Flo Aroma? I think these flowers are making me trip out, I need to get out of here. We save this dude from Team Galactic, and then he immediately tries to sell us his honey product. You ungrateful s- At the Valley Windworks, we're challenged by Team Galactic Commander Mars, who actually proves to be quite the challenge. Zubat is really difficult to get damage off on, and it uses Toxic on us, but thankfully our Shed Skin ability pulls us through. Man, Golbats with super effective flying moves are not gonna be fun. Her last Pokemon is a Perugly, and amazingly, Bug Bite actually allows us to steal and consume its Orin Berry, which saves us big time so we could just use Bide and barely take that thing out. Bug Bite is coming in clutch. After a long grind through Route 205 and Eterna Forest, we arrive in Eterna City for our second gym challenge. While exploring the city, we receive the experience share, which I decide to give to Wude since she's gonna need to evolve at some point for other HMs. We also encounter Cyrus and Cynthia telling us that things are getting serious even though it's so early on. Not between them, I, I mean like in the game. Come on guys, get your head out of the gutter. We get cut and teach it to Wude, but we can't use it until we get our next badge. In the Eterna Gym, they've got a cool system going on where the flower clock turns after you beat each trainer. Come on. Alright. Okay, I get it. Very cool. Okay, alright, just let me pass. We make it through the trainers in the gym quite easily since this is a grass type gym after all and we're super effective against most of them. Gardenia is the gym leader and I figure she'll be relatively easy with her typing and all. She leads with a level 20 Turtwig and we go for Bug Bite and it nearly takes it out but it barely survives. It then sets up Reflect which isn't good for us since we're relying on a physical move. She then uses a Super Potion on it and I'm starting to understand her strategy. 
Amazingly though, we get a crit on our next move to take it out despite the reflect. Phew. Next she sends out Cherim and it immediately goes for Leech Seed and I'm like, uh, not good. Bug Bite, despite being a super effective stab move, hardly does anything, especially after its Leech Seed recovery. We keep barely chipping down its health until we have like 20 HP remaining and we take it out. Her last Pokemon is a Roserade and I'm like, we will not be surviving this. We use Bug Bite and it gets a crit, but it barely survives on like 1 HP. But then it turns out Bug Bite stole her Citrus Berry, which I didn't know it had, and we get recovery back up to half health. But then Leech Seed brings us to 29 HP. She then uses a Super Potion and I'm like, dear lord, what is happening? But then our second Bug Bite also gets a crit and we take it out in one hit. What in the absolute in my 20 plus years of playing Pokemon, that has got to be in the top 5 craziest things I've seen. Unbelievable. Second gym badge, down. That was way more challenging than I thought a grass type gym would be for us. Feeling as though fate is now on our side, I slaughter my way through the galactic tower like Anakin going through the Jedi Temple. Okay, not really, I, I had a couple struggles. We make it to Commander Jupiter and it seems like the planets have aligned because we're able to take out the Zubat with Bide after getting hit with two wing attacks. Then our Quick Claw activates against the Skun Tank, allowing us to move first, use Bug Bite, steal its Citrus Berry to regain health, but then it outspeeds us and is able to take us out with two attacks. Yikes, this is going to be a little bit harder than I expected because we were super lucky there. Realizing we need to grind, I go to Route 211 where Wood A finally evolves. What a legend. Now we can take the experience share from it and hopefully get some good training on Delilah. We get her to level 33 and then level 34 where I'm hoping we're ready to try again because I cannot take grinding anymore. A few more failed attempts and I'm realizing just how incredibly lucky we'd have to get to win this. I don't even want to talk about how many attempts this battle took me. Eventually, it came down to getting a crit on our first hit on Skun Tank, allowing us to survive and take it out without taking much damage. I had tried so many strategies like using Growl, Bide, or Bug Bite at different times, and between taking crits and near misses, this was nearly impossible. Here I thought, oh, Team Galactic will be a pushover like every other evil team, but the typing of their Pokemon for this run is brutal. After a long grind through Cycling Road, Route 206, Mount Coronet, Route 207, and Route 208, wait a minute, what, what is this guy doing? Don't say a word, jeez, I'm out of here. We finally arrived in Heart Home City, the location of our next gym challenge. In the Pokemon fan club, some girl says, Oh, you're Delilah. It simply adores you. Why, I feel like I'm intruding. Oh, ho, ho. well, I mean... <laughs> Sometimes I look at the script that I wrote and I just... What? In one of the apartment buildings, some girl gives us a shell bell, which actually might be a useful item to hold instead of the quick claw, since we could use some recovery. This place is absolutely packed with people. Wait, what's this guy doing? My sisters are so loud, no one even notices me. Well, maybe that's because you're behind the f***ing wall in the corner, you creep. This old guy says, They call me Mr. Goods. No one knows my real name. Nope, not even I do. What is up with this place? Wanting to get the hell out of here, we head to Hard Home Gym. Ghost types I'm imagining shouldn't be too tough since they do have low physical defense usually, but the first trainer absolutely destroys me by using Curse on his Ghastly and then sending out a Drifloon which is of course part flying type. Uh oh. I decide to avoid that trainer and go for the other one thinking that it would be easier but oh man, this mere mischievous put me through absolute mayhem with confusion and pain split but we barely managed it with 6 HP. After a few more losses throughout the gym, I decide to switch out the Quick Claw for the Shell Bell, which I'm imagining will be more helpful here. After going through hell between curses, confusion, sleep, etc., I decide just to skip all the trainers in the gym. I, I can't do it. I can't take it. I'm out. Gym leader Fantina herself starts off with a Dust Gall, which isn't looking like a terrible challenge, but it ends up burning us, which is going to lower our attack at least until Shed Skin heals Delilah. It brings us down below half health before we can KO it. She next sends out a Haunter, which puts us to sleep with Hypnosis and Shadow Claws us to death with a critical hit. This is terrifying. And no, not just because it's a ghost-type gym. I grind to level 40 and try again. Her Duskull misses its Will-O-Wisp a couple times, allowing us to do good damage, then it burns us, but Shedskin heals us immediately, allowing us to take it out with full health. She next sends out her Miss Magius, and thankfully since Bide can hit ghost types in this generation, I go for Bide, she hits us with two Shadow Balls, then we respond and take it out with one hit. 
She sends out her final Pokemon, the Haunter. I go for Bide, and it's looking like we'll do well since we can survive two Shadow Claws, but right before we attack, it hits us with the Hypnosis. We then wake up from Shed Skin immediately, but then it gets a crit on its next attack to end our existence when it otherwise wouldn't have killed. Ah. Oh. A few more attempts and I am losing my mind. Between crits, burns, future sights, and hypnosis, this is proving to be very difficult. We just can't seem to beat that Haunter since when I go for Bide it can just hypnosis or even sucker punch to throw everything off. We level up all the way to level 43 just from trying to beat her and I'm not sure I've ever raged harder during one of these challenges than this. The thing that's getting to me is that Fantina's entire strategy is just luck based. Status moves everywhere and moves like Shadow Claw that have a high critical hit ratio and whatnot. In my unrelenting anger, I grind all the way to level 46 in the wild and then storm back in here. On this attempt, we have incredible luck to take down the Duskull with no damage, then take down the Haunter after all its confusion and sleep attempts. We make it to the Mismagius with great health, enough to be able to take two Shadow Balls and one hit KO it with Bide. But then I realize we're still confused. We don't hit ourselves the first turn and set up Bide, it hits us, and then we hit ourselves in confusion. The rage is burning, I have no words. 30 attempts later and about 4 hours later, no I'm not kidding, literally 4 hours after Confuse Rays, crits at the worst times from Shadow Claw, Priority Shadow Sneaks, Priority Sucker Punches, will o -Wisp Burns, Special Defense Drops from the Shadow Ball, repeatedly having to go through her gym and stumble into trainers that we can't beat during the puzzles, etc. And we finally have a promising run. Now at level 48, we can 2-hit KO the Duskull so it doesn't cause many problems. Her Haunter miraculously then doesn't put us to sleep or confuse us for the first time ever, and we make it to the Mismagius with sufficient health to be able to survive two Shadow Balls and take it out with Bide. It hits the first Shadow Ball and no damn way, it gets the special defense drop. Miraculously though, we survive the second hit on 13 HP and end the battle. I almost cried, I kid you not. She gives us the Shadow Claw TM for winning and says, its hits turn critical often. Yeah, no f***ing kidding. With newfound mental and emotional scars, I leave that gym forever. I am never coming back, ever. Hard home city. Everybody in this city is whack and your gym is as if things couldn't get any worse, right at the edge of leaving the city, none other than Barry shows up to battle us. He starts with his Staravia that has Intimidate to lower our attack right off the bat, then proceeds to spam Double Team. I try to use Bide since his attack and accuracy won't be affected by either things, but we can't pull it off because of the timing of his Double Teams and we lose. Dear Lord. I quickly grind to level 49 since we're so close anyway and rematch Barry. This time I go for Bug Bite right away to discourage him from using Double Team and it actually works so we're able to take it down with Bide. His Monferno then comes out and I know we're not doing any damage without using Bide. He goes for two Flame Wheels and unfortunately they're just able to take us out. The next battle was one of the most amazing things I've ever seen. We used the same strategy on Staravia to take it out. His Monferno comes in and we have 66 HP left. He hits us with a flame wheel and we go down to 34 HP meaning he hit us for 32 HP damage so we'll likely survive the next one. And we do, just barely, but then he gets the burn off on us, but Shed Skin immediately heals us before we get KO'd and we take the Monferno out. Holy. We get a bit of recovery from Shell Bell and he sends out Buizel. Bug Bite gets it down to like 1 HP and I'm like no 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 no, but we survive and take it out. Now I was celebrating here not realizing he had another Pokemon, his Rosalia. We heard the Rosalia quite badly but then it uses Stun Spore on us. It hits us with a Poison Sting which we survive and then we remain unaffected by the Paralysis to take it out and win the battle. I can't believe we just did that. That felt so damn good after all we just went through and because, well, this is Barry after all. Barry. After getting the Defog TM from the Salacion Ruins, we catch a Staravia as our second HM slave, and nickname it Hassle because of what Barry's Staravia was to us and because how much of a hassle Defog was to get. We teach Defog to it and make it to the top of the Lost Tower, and I'm like, oh, did I not need Defog? But it turns out these two old ladies really want the fog to go away, so we do their bidding. There's a simple solution here, ladies, just stop vaping. This one says, that Fantina, it's hard to tell what she's thinking. Yeah, no kidding. But she has a compassionate heart, you know? She's a regular visitor. Alright, time to burn this place down to the ground. Oh god, wait a minute, this is a cemetery. That is terrible. This run has really changed me. 
On the way to Veilstone, we encounter the infamous group of Psyducks blocking our path. Naturally, the only solution is to end all of their lives in one fell swoop, so I try ramming them down with the bike, but to no avail. Mission failed. We'll get them next time. We arrive in Veilstone City and get ready for our next gym battle. This gym is full of fighting types, and leading into it, I'm not quite sure how this will go. Being bug type, we resist fighting moves, but fighting moves also resist bugs, so we'll see what happens. The first trainer has three Machoke, which are quite intimidating, and although it's a lengthy process, they're definitely manageable. All the trainers in this gym are the same way besides one Heracross that manages to take us out. After completing the gym's puzzle, we make it to gym leader Maylene, and I'm not quite sure what to expect from her. She starts out with a Metatite, which I was thinking would be a pushover, but it barely survives a bug bite and uses super effective Rock Tomb on us, which also lowers our speed. We take it out and she sends out a Machoke, which apparently also knows Rock Tomb, and because of poor timing, I didn't get to use Bide quite well, so we actually end up losing. That thing is really bulky. Our rematch starts off well, we take out the Metatite and then deal with the Machoke much better this time around, using Bide before it uses Rock Tomb twice so we can take it out in one hit. Then she sends out a Lucario and I'm like, oh boy, this is gonna be tough. Since Bug Bite won't touch that thing in the slightest, we have a choice between Growl to lower its attack and Bide. And I go for Bide. It goes for Metal Claw twice in a row and we barely survive and I'm crossing my fingers hoping one Bide will do it and it does. Wow. That was definitely a more manageable gym, and thank god because I needed a break after Fantina. On the long journey to Pastoria City that's full of trainers, we meet Neck Bananas the Tropius and Karen the Feebass from our Emerald Challenge. Hope you guys are enjoying Sinnoh. We arrive in Pastoria City, and when checking out the Mart, I notice something. The Krogunk statue. Hold on. Gen 4 remakes confirmed. Alright, enough funny business, it's time to go give Crasher Wake a visit. The Pastoria City Gym is a water type gym and I'm thinking we'll be okay. We resist water moves and deal neutral damage against them so we're set up pretty well on the face of it. The trainers in the gym are all pretty easy aside from some water and flying types like Pelipper and we make it to gym leader Wake in one go. In our gym battle he starts off with a Gyarados which is obviously super powerful and bulky and it also has Intimidate to lower our attack so I'm kind of worried. We survive two heavy hits though and can repay them with Bide which takes him out in one hit. Next he sends out a Quagsire which I thought would be kind of easy but it actually turns out that it has super effective Rock Tomb out of nowhere. Since our health is getting low I decide to go for Bug Bite but it's not quite working out and our speed keeps dropping so our momentum slows to a crawl and we end up losing. A few more attempts and Quagsire is absolutely killing us. Even after switching strategies and trying to use Growl to lower its attack, it's not working out and that thing even has Yawn to put us to sleep too. Grinding is going to be necessary, surprisingly enough. Without Gyarados's Intimidate, we could probably manage this quite easily, but that's unavoidable. I painstakingly grind as much as I possibly can to level 67 and decide to go for it. This time we get so damn close, I was like, oh, 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 but this stupid thing survives on literally 1 HP. Ah. Uh. Eventually, on one attempt, the Quagsire starts using Mudshot towards the end, so we're able to KO it with just 2 HP remaining, but of course, his last Pokemon is a Floatzel that has Aqua Jet. Accepting the inevitable, I commit to the exceedingly difficult grind all the way to level 70. This is all I'm doing. No more, I can't tolerate it. Let's beat this WWF mother -er. Wait, the WWF is the World Wildlife Foundation now, isn't it? I meant the WWE. Actually, you know what? I was just implying that Wake was an animal, okay? I'm not old. I try again and again and again and I can't beat Wake. It's so damn difficult. Eventually, an idea comes to mind. Surely I should be able to get some sort of good item that might do better than a Quick Claw or Shell Bell on Cricketot. Then I remember, hold on a sec, something like the Insect Plate should have been in the Eterna Forest, which raises the power of Bug-type moves by 20%. So I fly to Eterna Forest, look around everywhere, and I can't find anything, so I check out the old chateau. I find the Dread Plate, but not the Insect Plate, so I look online. Everything says it's on the wall of the right side of the old chateau, and that it requires cut, so I'm looking around everywhere, but it turns out it meant that you just need cut to get into the old chateau, and it's not on the wall of the old chateau, it's on the cliff wall beside the old chateau, and isn't visible. Oh my god. I try a couple more times and then finally start to have a promising battle. I decide to go for Bug Bite off the bat since it does do some more damage now and the Quagsire keeps missing its Rock Tomb so we make it to the Flosal with what I think is the highest health we've had. It all comes down to this. 
Floatzel goes for Crunch and gets us down to 31 HP. I go for Bug Bite and it just barely rolls over half and steals its Citrus Berries so we get Recovery. It then goes for Brine which we survive on 24 HP and our second Bug Bite does it. Fifth Gym Badge. I can't believe it. That was way more of a struggle than I expected. No more underestimating Gym Leaders. We beat Cyrus and arrive in Candlelave City. Now at level 74, I'm feeling pretty okay about facing a Steel-type gym with Bide, but I know we'll have to look out for rock moves. But as we cross the bridge, Barry shows up. Oh no, god, no, why? He now has a fully evolved Staraptor and Infernape. Remember how difficult his battles were before? This is an entirely different level. After losing, we have one lucky run where we make it past the Staraptor with good health, and then his Infernape uses Flame Wheel and burns us, but Shed Skin heals us immediately. We barely survive the second Flame Wheel and are able to use Bide, but oh yeah, Mock Punch. It's grinding time. Luckily, Route 218 is full of high XP yield Pokemon like Mr. Mime and Floatzel that we can KO in one hit, so grinding isn't terrible, I suppose. I grind all the way up to level 77 and after a couple more attempts I manage to take down the Infernape as well, but he has a brand new Heracross that tanks a bug bite like it's nothing and takes us out with Brick Break. Yikes. I grind further all the way to level 80 and try a few more times. One time we get a crit on the bug bite on the Staraptor and we're able to take it out without taking any damage. This is it. We take down the Infernape with Bide and then use Bide on the Heracross and it surprisingly has Aerial Ace of all things, but we make it past. He then sends out a Floatzel and I'm like, no, don't do it, but he goes for Priority Aqua Gen and gets a crit on us to take us out. I grind to level 81 and then to level 82 and decide to try again. After a few more losses while trying other strategies like holding a Citrus Berry, I try with a Shell Bell. Eventually, I decide to go for Bug Bite first on Staraptor, then get a crit on the second one to take it out with full health since it just used Double Team. I use Bite on the Infernape and luckily I don't get burned on either of the two hits to finish it with over half health. His Heracross uses Aerial Ace twice and we survive them to KO it with Bide with 47 HP left after Shell Bell recovery. His Floatzel comes out and uses Aqua Jet but this time no crit and we survive it. Bug Bite does over half, we get some more Shell Bell recovery, survive the second Aqua Jet and KO it. His final Pokemon is his Roserade and with 31 HP I'm doubting this will be possible. It survives Bug Bite and then uses Grass Whistle to put us to sleep, but Shed Skin saves the day and we finish Barry off. Wow, that was not a fun time at all. We can finally take on the next gym. We make it to Gym Leader Byron who is the father of Rourke. He starts out with a Magneton that uses Metal Sound to lower our special defense and then hits us hard with a Thunderbolt. We take it out with a couple of Bug Bites and then he sends out his Bastiodon and we use Bide. Its Metal Sound misses, then it hits us hard with a Stab Super Effective Stone Edge which allows us to repay it with Bide for a one hit KO. His Steelix then comes out, uses Flash Cannon and we die on the second turn to a Crit Earthquake. Our next attempt goes a bit better since I decide to use Bide on the Magneton and it takes it out in one hit after Thunderbolt allowing us to preserve a little bit more health. His Bastiodon comes out and then uses Stone Edge which does a ton of damage but it misses its second one allowing us to take it out as well. His Steelix then goes for Flash Cannon once and does less than half of our remaining health so I thought that we'd win but the second one gets a high roll and takes us out. So damn close. I grind one more level to level 84 hoping that will allow us to survive if we do get to that point again. Now this took so many attempts it's unbelievable because it all came down to the order in which he used his moves for our bide strategy. Sometimes his Steelix would also use Sandstorm which would throw everything off entirely. After 20 attempts or so I accidentally used Bug Bite on his Bastiodon and as it turns out it holds a Citrus Berry so we can steal it. So I begin to formulate a strategy around this. I put our own Citrus Berry on Delilah, try like 10 more times and finally we have a run where we actually get to the Steelix above half health. It gets a crit on its Flash Cannon meaning we get to do more damage, our second Citrus Berry activates and since we have such high health now it goes for Flash cannon again instead of sandstorm and we can finally finally take that thing out big brain plays right there six badges at the cantilave library we sit and have a chat with our crew like it's a sitcom when suddenly holy another explosion this kid's like that tremor it was wicked i scrambled to find the book disaster strikes survival guide <laughs> After dealing with a ton of Team Galactic nonsense, we arrive in the cold region of Canada, I, I mean, Snowpoint City. The trainers in the Snowpoint Gym are pretty easy. Ice is neutral to us both offensively and defensively. It's time for Gym Leader Candice and this battle is absolutely insane. 
She starts with her Sneasel, which outspeeds us and hits us with a super effective Aerial Ace before we can take it out with Bug Bite. She then sends out a Piloswine, which survives a Bug Bite and uses Hail to set up a Snowstorm before we KO it with another attack. Her Frostlast comes out and uses Blizzard, and then we hit it with a Bug Bite, and it turns out it actually had a Citrus Berry, which we steal and gain back health from, before eventually taking it out with 53 HP after Shell Bell. Then comes the Obama Snow, and this was crazy. It of course restarts the Hail with its ability, then we go for super effective Bug Bite, but it barely survives. It goes for Avalanche, and we survive on just 16 HP, and then the Hail hurts us down to 4 HP. Candace then uses a full restore on it, and our next bug bite takes it down to 1 HP. We survived this turn again by just 9 HP, and it turns out that I ran out of bug bite power points, so we get taken out. And then her Obama Snow also gets KO'd due to the Woodhammer recoil, but it doesn't count since we got taken out first. If only we had more power points, we could have done it. That means completing the entire gym puzzle over again, and it's a fairly tricky one. On our second attempt, we find ourselves in a very similar situation. However, since we now have bug bite power points, we can actually take the damn thing out by barely surviving the hail. Seventh gym badge acquired. That was much smoother than most. And if I wasn't an idiot, that would have been just a one attempt thing. Since we do need rock climb to continue, I had to go to the ironworks to catch us a beautiful magmar, which we nickname Timmy. Don't ask questions. As per section 902.3 of the World Health Charter, I'm allowed to be insane after the seventh badge of a challenge run, okay? We make it to the Galactic Headquarters in Veilstone, and near the end of our mission we make it to the Nap Room. Ensure that the bed is unoccupied before getting into it. <laughs> Cyrus is quite a challenge. His Sneasel is easy to take care of, but his Crobat goes for Supersonic and is impossible to take down without using Bide, and its air cutters do a ton of damage to us. We lose, but on our second attempt, the Crobat miraculously misses all three of its Supersonics, and we manage to make it to the Honchkrow. Not knowing what to expect, I go for Bug Bite, which does over half, and it turns out this thing was holding a Citrus Berry, so we steal it and gain back some HP. It then goes for Stab Super Effective Drill Peck and nearly takes us out, but then we can KO it. Ooh man, did that Citrus Berry Steel ever come in clutch. We complete the whole Mount Coronet mission and reach my favorite part of Platinum, the part where the protagonist starts tripping out and thinking he's in another dimension to save this beautiful princess he's got a crush on from an evil wizard man and a dragon. Gosh, what compelling storytelling. At the end of the maze, we reach Cyrus, who challenges us to battle. This battle is insane. He starts with three Pokemon that all have stab super effective moves against us. His Houndoom starts off by burning us, then goes for a flamethrower. After a couple attempts, I find out that if we can avoid or cure the burn with Shed Skin, we can take it out with Bide after it uses Flamethrower on the second turn. His Honchcrow, however, has Drill Peck and doesn't die to one Bug Bite. On one attempt, I survive the Drill Peck on 6 HP and then take it out to make it to the Crobat. His Crobat, though, of course outspeeds us and can take us out right away. After several more attempts and switching up items, I realize that going with the insect plate to raise the power of our bug bite and using rare candies now is our best bet so that we can take out that Houndoom with one bug bite before it can hit us. I have to be honest here, just for this battle I saved right before it and restarted the game if we lost because if we do lose, we have to travel all the way through Mount Coronet and all the way through the Distortion World maze which takes about 20 minutes each time. Trust me, I have experience. And I did want to get this episode out to you guys at some point in the year 2020 after all. After six hours of trying this battle, yes, much worse than even Fantina, I was finally lucky enough to get past the Houndoom, take out the Honchkrow in one hit with a crit bug bite, then this caused the Crobat to go for Toxic instead since we had high health, so it doesn't just go for an attacking move to finish us off. Which it missed, and we only got hit once in order to make it to his Gyarados. I go for Bide and it uses Waterfall twice, after which we can repay the damage to take it out. And finally, his Weavile comes out, which I know will absolutely outspeed us. Worse yet, it uses Fake Out, which basically just gives it a free turn of damage, and it crits. Then it goes for Ice Punch, and I'm like, please, for the love of all that is holy, don't KO us, or freeze us, and it doesn't. We survive on 16 HP, go for a super effective Insect Plate Boosted Stab Bug Bite, and it doesn't kill. I almost punched a hole through my screen, but it turns out that this Weavile actually holds a Citrus Berry, which we stole. We have one last chance, but then Cyrus uses the full restore on it. Holy f***. We go for Bug Bite, it just 
barely doesn't kill. He goes for Ice Punch and it gets a crit, but we survive on 8 HP. Don't get frozen and take it out to finally beat him. That was one of the worst and most insane things I have ever experienced in my 20 years of playing Pokemon. I felt physically ill after this, and I'm not exaggerating. I did not feel okay after six hours of literal hell. I'd like to personally issue a massive f you to Cyrus. I hope Giratina absolutely f On our way to Sunny Shore City, we make sure to perform some big brain plays with all these rock climb locations. I'm talking massive month. All right, let's find this girl's keys. Where are they? Come on, hello? I've gone to every- Oh, there, okay, see? Galaxy Brain. Let's return them and see what she's gonna give us in return. Uh, hello? Upon arriving in Sunny Shore City, one of the Elite Four, Flint, stops us and says that the gym leader has been losing motivation since all of his challengers have been weak. Well, don't look at me, dude. I've got nothing but a cricket tot. Upon finding gym leader Volkner, he says, I'm gonna unleash everything in my ars- uh, Oh, oh, arsenal. Arsenal on you. Okay, Ooh, I thought that was going somewhere else entirely. But then he comes in closer. He says, Soph, this may be shocking, but I'm getting a real buzz off of being in your presence. What do you say we flip the switch and allow the circuits to take over? Let the current guide you. What does that even mean? Walkner's battle starts off kind of rough. His Jolteon paralyzes us with Thunder Wave, and surprisingly, we don't take it out in one hit with Bug Bite. He then immediately uses a Hyper Potion. We use Bug Bite again, and it brings it to like 1 HP. Then he uses Charge Beam. We remain paralyzed. Then it hits us again and gets a special attack boost. We get paralyzed again, and it hits us with an even stronger Charge Beam before we can take it out. Sheesh. He then sends out a Luxray, which uses super effective Fire Fang to bring us well below half. But Shedskin activates to rid us of Paralysis, and now we outspeed it this turn to KO him. In comes the Electivire, which we also outspeed. We use Bug Bite, and it turns out that thing had a Citrus Berry, which we steal, so we're miraculously able to survive his super effective Fire Punch, which also burns us, but Shedskin activates immediately. He then uses a Hyper Potion on it, but that means we can hit it twice in a row and KO it. His final Pokemon is a Raichu, and this battle has already been crazy enough, so we finally catch a break and are able to just one-hit KO it with Bug Bite. Wow, a victory on the first attempt. That's new. After a long trip through Victory Road in which we lost six times and had to trek all the way back through again, we arrive at the Pokemon League. Towards the end of the road, I was like, dear lord, here comes Barry. But surprisingly, he didn't stop us, unlike most Pokemon games where the rivals are near Victory Road as one last test. Perplexed and amazed, I deposit our HM slaves and head into- Oh, for God's sake. Barry's battle, which occurs literally two steps away from the Elite Four, might I add, is proving to be impossible. He's got that standard Staraptor lead with Intimidate, and although we can get past it, his Infernape now has Flamethrower instead of Flame Wheel, and we can't come close to surviving it. Just before giving up, an idea comes to mind. The Move Tutor. Uproar might be able to do something since it's not lowered by Staraptor's Intimidate, and it's not resisted by Staraptor or Infernape unlike Bug Bite. So I travel far and wide to collect the right shards. We need two green shards and six yellow shards. I have enough green shards already, but I need more yellow. Our first stop is the Great Marsh, where I spend half an hour getting stuck in the mud to find two yellow shards. Next stop is the Fugo Ironworks right above Fl Flo Floroma Town. God damn it. Where after going through the insane maze, we make it to Mr. Fugo, who exchanges shards for star pieces, which we have a few of, and ironically enough, he gives us one too, which we can then just trade right back to him. Strange guy. He's also upset that people don't like the massive maze he apparently constructed. I think this guy is who I aspire to be when I'm older. After getting uproar from the move tutor in Snowpoint City, it's back to the Pokemon League to scream at Barry using uproar the way he always does at us. And, as I initially suspected, Uproar is f***ing garbage. Just not helpful in the slightest. I try over and over again, but I cannot beat Barry. Bide is the only usable option here, and there's just no way Krikatot can tank two stab super effective aerial aces, which can't miss, mind you, then a stab super effective flamethrower from an Infernape that outspeeds us. Not to mention it would have to take another flamethrower in order to use Bide, then Barry has four remaining Pokemon after that, and all we've got is minimal Shell Bell recovery. 
even if we were able to break several rules with all 31 IVs and perfectly EV trained with some competitive item we're not able to get until post game, I don't think there's any way a Krikatot could beat Barry at the Pokemon League without using non-held items in battle. Now granted, we did have him choose Infernape as a starter to make things more challenging, but even if he had Torterra, which mind you holds a Citrus Berry, he just instead has a Rapidash with Fire Blast, which he'd just send out in place of Infernape since his AI is programmed to send out super effective Pokemon. And let's not forget about his Heracross, Floatzel, and Snorlax with Body Slam. We're going to have to declare this challenge impossible. Honestly, in a way, I'm kind of happy. We made it so far and all the way to the Pokemon League with a Pokemon that has less than 200 total base stats and can barely attack. There were so many times I thought I had to give up, but I pushed on to my absolute limit beyond what I thought was possible. Platinum is definitely no easy game either. This is also the first challenge we haven't been able to beat aside from bonus post-game battles, and honestly, it feels kind of cool knowing that we reached the limit of a certain Pokemon. Delilah, let's sing a song in honor of your triumph. Delilililwoop, delilililishoop. <laughs> well, there you go, folks. I hope you enjoyed this journey as much as I did. This was the hardest challenge we've done so far, and honestly, with the amount that I was playing this game, I pushed myself so hard that I almost threw up. Never in my life did I think we'd find something harder than Emerald with a Feebas. If you did enjoy this challenge, please be sure to let me know by leaving a like and commenting a favorite moment of yours down below or other challenges you'd like to see me do. Both likes and comments help a ton with the YouTube algorithm, so I'd be super appreciative if you guys could do this for me if you enjoy this challenge and appreciate the effort. Let's strive for 2,500 likes to unlock another challenge video. Don't forget to subscribe and click that bell to turn notifications on so you're ready for the next one. If you guys enjoy my content, please be sure to check out my other videos and consider supporting on Patreon to get some cool perks. The link will be in the description below. Thank you all for watching, this has been Soul Spectre, and I'll see you guys next time for some more Pokemon content.